Hello viewers, I am going to present my fifth part of my talk in connection with multiplicative analysis. The title of my talk is Compact Spaces and Connected Spaces. There are many spaces in connection with M matrix spaces. Uh, I choose three important spaces. One is a compact, compact spaces. Second one is the connected spaces and one more totally bounded spaces. I consider, of course, only the subsets. Uh, I'm going to exactly I'm going to consider the compact subsets, connected subsets, and the totally bounded subsets in my talk. I best I begin with the, the definition of uh, compact spaces for which I need the definition of a cover. I, uh, if I consider a subset A of a set A X, a collection C of subsets of X is called a cover if a union of members of C contains a set A. And a sub collection of the collection is called a sub cover of the, the given cover if the sub collection is itself a cover for the set. And when I come to the when I come to, when I consider the subsets A of, uh, subsets of uh, M matrix spaces, uh, then uh, a collection C is called an uh, open cover if it is a cover and every member of that collection or the cover is an open set. We open ray in the M matrix space. In that case, I say that uh, that cover, that, that cover is an open cover. Now I come to the definition of uh, compact spaces. Uh, compact subsets, uh, I begin with uh, M matrix space X and I consider a set A, subset of uh, X, and uh, A is to be a compact subset of X if uh, every open cover of uh, A has a finite sub cover. And uh, I have to give one remark uh, that this uh, uh, just see if I restrict the metric to A instead of this uh, X if I restrict the metric to A itself then the A is a compact subset of X mod E if and only if a uh, metric space uh, A commodity is itself a compact one when I consider A as a subset of A itself. Uh, it's possible to verify this property relatively. I mean, uh, the, 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 uh, even if I restrict the uh, metric, M metric, uh, even to the subsets, uh, uh, that doesn't affect the components of the set. And uh, that is so, see, uh, the first result is the first proportion is this one. Uh, every closed subset of a compact. M matrix space should be yeah, a compact subset uh, for which I consider a subset, closed subset of a compact M matrix space X commodity. And uh, I have to establish that the A is a compact set, so for which I consider a uh, open cover C for the set uh, A, capital A, and uh, in, include one more. Uh, member X minus A along with the collection C to form a new collection B, then the B becomes uh, open cover for X, being X is a uh, compact M matrix space, uh, the B has a finite sub cover, finite sub cover for X. Then I, once again, uh, I remove the member if that is, I remove the member, the X minus A, the common number of A from that final sub collection and I have a new sub collection, a new final sub collection A, then that uh, script A, of course the collection you don't know whether noticing script A, the script A is a cover for the set capital A, it is a binary sub cover for the given open cover C and that way uh, the AR becomes a compact subset of uh, X. So, every closed subset of a compact M matrix space is uh, also a uh, compact subset. See, next proposition is related to that one. Uh, if I can begin with a compact subset of a M matrix space, that is, M matrix space need not be compact, 
and if I, we can make the compact subset of a matrix space, then the compact subset should necessarily be a closed one. I come to the proof, a standard argument. See, look at the proof. Uh, to establish that uh, uh, x a is close, I, 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 I try to prove that x minus a, the complement of a is open, and uh, for which I fix one point in the usually in the complement at present x minus a, and I try to find a ball having the. Uh, open ball having the point is at the center such a way that uh, that ball is contained in x minus a and uh, for that purpose uh, for every x small x plus a I define a number rx equal to the root of uh, uh, d of x comma z since uh, x is not equal to z uh, d of x comma z is greater than 1 so root of uh, d of x comma z is greater than 1 so rx is greater than 1 so I can consider the ball uh, open ball uh, b x comma r x uh, then it's very easy to see that this uh, a uh, since the x is a member of b of x comma r x uh, this a is containing the union of b of x comma r x uh, when the union is taken over all small x in a a so the right hand side is an open cover for uh, a because every open ball is an open set so this uh, open cover should have a finite sub cover so we can find uh, finitely many members uh, and x1 x2 xn in a capital a such that uh, this uh, a is uh, contained in the union of uh, b of uh, xi comma rxi uh, uh, units taken uh, when i vary this i from 1 to n and i then I write this uh, R is, uh, I define so R as a minimum of uh, Rx1, Rx2 and uh, Rxn, etc. Rxn. Then this R is also greater than 1. And then uh, the, my claim is that the ball, uh, open ball, uh, having the point Z as uh, center and R as radius uh, doesn't intersect F. This is established by means of uh, the triangle type inequality. Now see, if I choose uh, one point, suppose it so happens that uh, one point is in uh, y is in uh, the intersection of uh, this uh, a and uh, b of z comma r, then b uh, d of z comma y is uh, strictly less than r, and uh, then uh, this uh, I have that in inequality. I may have the conclusion uh, by using the triangle type inequality that uh, d of x j z is uh, uh, strictly less than d of uh, x j comma z this uh, obviously is a contradiction because uh, 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 saying one number is strictly less than the same number is an uh, absurd thing so you have a contradiction and so necessarily uh, we cannot have any member y in the intersection of a and b of z comma so 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 uh, this B of Z comma R is contained in the complement of A and that way I establish that uh, X minus A is open and uh, so this uh, A is should be a closed subset of uh, this uh, uh, yeah the compact set and uh, see that the components was used to uh, establish that uh, for uh, the open ball right side that, uh, we, uh, in terms of the balls b of x comma rx uh, we had uh, apparently many such balls uh, that cover uh, the a and uh, so every compact subset of uh, m matrix a should be a closed subset and then i define a new concept in the next slide the uh, diameter of a subset of uh, matrix m matrix space uh, i begin with the m matrix space x comma d i consider a set a of course a non empty set uh, i define a diam a diameter of a denoted by the diam a and uh, the diam a is a supremum of all d of x comma y where the supremum, uh, supremum is taken over all possible by uh, x members x y in a a and then i define the diameter like this uh, and i also follow one convention that diameter of a empty set is uh, uh, one and uh, I say that a subset is a bounded set in a M matrix so if uh, the diameter of the set is a finite number. And the next proposition is this, uh, uh, every compact subset of a M matrix so should be a bounded set. I begin with the compact subset A of um, yeah, 
m matrix space x comma d and then i consider the uh, union uh, b of x comma 2 uh, where the union state for all x belongs to a that's an open cover for a so the a that a should have i mean this cover should have a finite sub curve for a and uh, say it is a uh, covered by b of x i comma 2 where i is uh, varied from uh, 1 to n then i define a number k uh, it's a supreme of d of x i comma x a where i n varied uh, both i and j are varied from 1 to n and then uh, if i choose some member arbitrary members uh, x and y in a capital a uh, just to estimate uh, the diameter of a and then uh, d of x y is uh, uh, then this x is seen in uh, some b of x i comma 2 and y is in some uh, b of x j comma 2 so that uh, d of x i comma uh, x is uh, less than 2 and uh, uh, d of uh, x j comma y is uh, less than 2 and uh, so that uh, when I apply the triangle type inequality I can give the, have the conclusion that uh, d of x comma y is less than 4 times of k that uh, 4k is a phonic number so the diameter of a is also uh, less than or equal to 4k so diameter of a is a phonic number so it should be a bounded set and then I give the definition of this uh, total bounded subset i begin with the subset a of uh, m matrix space x comma d and uh, it is said to be a totally bounded if for given epsilon greater than one this a is uh, uh, covered by or contained in uh, finite union of balls uh, b of x i comma epsilon where uh, finite, of course the only finitely many balls i is equal to one to n and uh, uh, see in that case we said that it is a totally bounded set see if the set is a totally bounded set uh, we can choose then and the members xi inside the a itself uh, uh, it, that can be established by means of uh, some technical slight adjustment not a uh, uh, difficult one just a slight adjustment is possible to establish that one and I give an extra proposition every totally bounded subset of m matrix should also be uh, bounded set uh, of course only thing we have to repeat the same arguments uh, that is applicable for the proof of uh, uh, the every compact subset uh, is a bounded set uh, so I am not going to repeat it again and uh, see one observation every I mean compactness implies uh, totally bounded uh, means this means that uh, if I consider a complex uh, subset of uh, metric M matrix space, then it should also be totally bounded for which it is very simple that uh, only thing that uh, you consider the uh, the classical cover uh, like this uh, as I said this A is contained in the uh, union of B of X comma uh, say epsilon when epsilon contains one and uh, when the union is taken over all a small exponents to capital A that cover uh, should have a finite sub cover yeah, when A is a compact set. Uh, so that one should have a uh, finite sub cover. That is a uh, necessary uh, one uh, for the definition of the totally bounded set. So every compact set, uh, uh, compact subset should be a totally bounded set. Uh, of course, converse may not be true. And uh, I then I like to give the definition of the connected set, the, the other important subset. Uh, uh, and matrix m matrix spaces uh, in the next slide i begin with the non empty set uh, of a m matrix space x comma d then i say that x is a non connector if there are two open sets you want to be in capital x such that u intersect a is non empty v intersect a is non empty and a is connected in u intersection v and u intersection a intersection v intersection a is a empty if these conditions are satisfied then a is said to be non connected then a is said to be connected if a is not non connected uh, in this way uh, we have the definition of this uh, connected set uh, and i again like to you uh, not one thing that uh, even if you restrict the metric uh, from uh, x into a capital a itself uh, the definition of the connectedness not affected in the sense that uh, a is a connected subset of x comma d if and only if uh, a is a connected subset of uh, a comma d when d is restricted to a 
then uh, next one is a classical one a continuous image of a connected set is a connected uh, uh, for which i uh, begin with the uh, a connected subset uh, uh, in the domain say x uh, for a function f uh, and I consider f of a if f of a is not uh, if f of a is not connected it is non connected in that case I can find two open sets u and v as stated in the definition for non connected sets uh, then I consider the inverse image of these open sets uh, and the, these open sets uh, satisfy the conditions for non connectedness of the set A. So, if f of A is not connected, then A is also not connected. This means that uh, if A is connected, then f of A should also be connected. Uh, here, the continuity of f is used uh, uh, by giving the arguments that inverse image of open sets uh, in the DOM of codomain uh, become open sets in the domain. So, in a continuous image of a connected set is a connected set, uh, we have a similar result for compact sets in the next slide. Uh, continuous image of a compact set is a compact. Uh, well, uh, this means that I begin with uh, a function uh, from a M matrix space into M matrix space, uh, and then I type, uh, consider a compact subset A in the domain. I have to see, check that the F of A is compact in the uh, for my see for which I have to consider an open cover for this uh, f of a then I consider the inverse image of the members of this uh, that uh, cover open cover then this is also an open cover for uh, e, but a because the inverse image of open set is open but uh, this open cover for a has a finite scope cover and uh, when I consider this uh, corresponding images I mean uh, this uh, corresponding image I mean the corresponding open sets in the domain, the finite, uh, finitely many open sets, that, uh, that becomes a finite subcover for the uh, FFA. In that way, FFA should also be a compact subset. Thus, uh, image of a compact subset, a continuous image of a compact subset uh, should be a compact subset. But when I come to the totally boundedness, uh, the can, this, uh, continuity is not sufficient for uh, to me and uh, I have to begin with the uniformly continuous functions uh, say the rest of the next proposition says that uh, the uniform continuous image of a totally bounded set is uh, totally bounded uh, so once again I consider a uh, uniformly continuous function from matrix m matrix space x comma uh, dx to m matrix space uh, y comma dy and uh, I also consider a totally bounded set A of the domain and I have to prove that uh, the F of A is also totally bounded and uh, for that purpose I begin with an epsilon cutter 1 uh, and then uh, for this epsilon cutter 1 because of the uniform continuity I can find a delta cutter 1 such that uh, it's a dy of fx comma f y is less than epsilon whenever dx of x comma y is uh, less than delta in uh, capital X. Uh, so in that case uh, being this uh, A is a total boundary set uh, for this delta then this A is uh, contained in the finitely many bars uh, uh, with the radius, uh, finally many open bars with the radius uh, delta, then automatically if I consider the corresponding finite many bars, uh, say, uh, say f of x, if I, uh, uh, the bars with the center x I cover a, then the bars with the uh, center so f of x I but uh, with the radius, uh, uh, so common radius, epsilon, that finally many bars cover f of a. So, in, that, in this way we can prove that f of a should also be totally bounded and so uniformly continuous image of uh, totally bounded set uh, should be a totally bounded set. Yeah, with this I come to this uh, concluding part of my talk. So see, there are many, many, many uh, ways in which the subject multiplicate analysis can be extended. Uh, see, differentiation can be introduced. Uh, uh, differentiable functions or continuous functions can be established. Uh, the Riemann integration concept can be introduced uh, and analyzed in a uh, uh, multiplicate analysis. Uh, uh, something like the measure, additive measure is possible to define, uh, multiplicative measure and it is possible to define uh, abstract integration, abstract Lebesgue integration, it is possible to uh, derive the risk representation theorem. So, we can proceed, we can derive a number of results uh, and uh, I, I say I am going to uh, 
publish a book on multiplicative analysis containing all these things. Uh, I already told my in the previous talk uh, I would give the reference uh, for infinite products uh, and the, I mentioned uh, one article published by me in the law uh, 2019 in the journal the the mathematics student uh, uh, this uh, the title of this article is uh, infinite products using multiplicative models of function uh, yeah, this uh, you can derive uh, you can uh, download uh, from the website because uh, the journal itself provide in its website the all the articles published uh, in many years it also includes my article uh, you can download to get the, some more idea uh, the way in which the multiplicative uh, models functions are uh, applicable and uh, in way you may see the multiplicative models function become an origin for uh, the entire multiplicative analysis. Uh, so with this uh, final remark I conclude my uh, talk on multiplicative analysis uh, and in the next slide it shows a set of questions uh, asked to you uh, in connection with this particular uh, fifth part of my talk. Uh, see, you may see that the questions uh, and uh, answer them and uh, send the answers to me. Thank you very much. Thank you.